Welcome back everybody to Tech with Benefits. My name's Daniel and today's video I want to take you back in time. 10 years to be more precise. You're sitting there on your phone and yes I'm fully aware I'm using an S23 Ultra. Just go with it. You're playing your smartphone games and you're having a great old time interacting with your touchscreen, having you know a lot of fun but your thumb's getting in the way, it's distracting. You haven't got much screen to play with as it is so any screen real estate being covered is a distraction. And then you think there must be a better way. Samsung thought so too. And that is where they came up with the gamepad. So the Samsung gamepad, it came out in 2013 with two different color options with the gray and the white and the all darker gray color. When we take a bit of a look at the hardware of this model, you can see on the front, you have your fairly stock standard analog sort of stick at the top left. Underneath that, you've got your four way D-pad. Next to that, you have another analog stick and above that you have your buttons. The buttons being very clicky and satisfying to press in. So when you are in those button mashing moments on your game, you have a very satisfying feel and touch with it. Flicking the device to the back, you can see you've got the nice grips there and they do give it a really ergonomic, comfortable feel. Turning it over to the bottom, you have your start and your select buttons, as well as a unfortunate micro USB charging connection. Now, of course, being that it was 2013, that was the standard. You also have making your way back around the device. Before we get to the top, you have the S console button. I have no idea what it does. Well, I remember it uh, launching some kind of gaming related software back with the S4 and Note 3 launches of that year. However, right now it does nothing. At the top of the device, you have your right and left trigger buttons. The left trigger on my white model has sadly left us, but the right trigger is very much still there. The button still works. There's just nothing covering it. But this is where this gamepad had the trick up its sleeve. You could open it up and be able to clip your phone into it. And that is what truly allowed this to become your mobile sort of game station because you can take this with you and turn your phone into a portable console. Some specs, uh, I couldn't really find a lot on the internet. The things I were able to find was that it's Bluetooth 3.0 connection. I didn't find a battery capacity or how long the battery lasts for. What I was able to ascertain though is it weighs 195 grams, which means that it's on the heavier side for a controller of its of its dimensions. And when you add a phone into it, that can push it up over the 400 gram mark. But still, from a portability standpoint, it's very compact and will fit easily into any bag. All right, so pairing this thing up, fortunately was a breeze because uh, back then Samsung believed more is more, not less is more. This thing made it very easy to connect to your phone. You obviously have the Bluetooth and the on switches at the bottom, which you can activate to enter it into pairing mode, but you can bypass that while it's on and simply tap the NFC contact area on the back to initiate pairing. God, I miss NFC pairing. All you have to do is tap it, it launches the little area on the phone, you hit pair, you're done. Once you've got this thing paired, you'll find that it is very easy to use as a navigation tool throughout your phone. So once you have it docked into the little clip, you can easily navigate to your game using the directional buttons. So that way you don't have to interact with touch screen because it is a little bit awkward when it's there. Also, when it is docked in, it's very evident that this was built 10 years ago because phones back then had much thicker bezels and since smartphone companies have had a war on bezels since about the Galaxy S7 days, it's become very apparent that this was not designed to be used with modern smartphones because the clip overhangs and intrudes into the area of the phone's display. Be aware of that if you are looking to pick one of these up on the secondhand market. Now, in terms of games that this is compatible with, and if you're looking to pick one of these up, this section is for you. Because it is old, it's not going to work with every game. However, being that it's just a standard Bluetooth gamepad, it will work with most games. So I wanted to test a few popular ones just to see what the compatibility was like. First up, 
Fortnite. So I downloaded the very lengthy Fortnite download process, uh, re-signed into my account that I haven't signed in for for at least, I want to say, three years, and launched the game. Great news is that the gamepad was able to work perfectly. You could navigate through the, the menus and use the buttons to click and start your game. And then once you're in game, all of the buttons work and they all have a purpose. So the buttons that you use to fly down, I don't know if that's the terminology, the trigger buttons all work, bringing up your different menus, all of it compatible. So Fortnite, big tick. Next game to test out was Asphalt 9 Legends. With Asphalt 9, same sort of story. Uh, it is a game that can be used with touchscreen. However, racing games just always work better with a controller. Doesn't matter what platform you're playing on, controller, racing games, perfect. So this works. Again, same fashion as what Fortnite, all the same controls. Navigating through the menu, uh, in-game racing, your NOS button. I think it, I don't think they call it NOS in Asphalt, but I'm just going to call it NOS anyway. That all works great. It does enhance the experience of the game. So definitely worth picking one of these up if you're looking to play Asphalt 9. The big one, though, that I wanted to try, and I did have this request come through on Twitter, Call of Duty Mobile. Call of Duty Mobile is obviously one of the biggest mobile games on the planet. And everyone's looking for an advantage. I know myself personally, I way prefer playing Call of Duty with a controller. Call of Duty with this, I had a lot of high hopes for because it would be perfect to have this because it's so much more compact than other game controllers that are out there. Unfortunately, it does not work. You will need to find another solution because the gamepad is not compatible. It didn't work in the menu. It didn't work in gameplay. Very frustratingly, I tried everything I could and nothing worked. If you're wanting to get this for Call of Duty, don't. One last, I guess, tr standard traditional smartphone side of gaming experience right now is Xbox Game Pass. So I really wanted to try the cloud gaming and see how this controller could handle it. Being a Bluetooth controller, Xbox Game Pass is pretty liberal with how and what controllers they allow. I use my PS5 controller all the time with my Tab S8 Ultra and Xbox Game Pass. So I had high hopes that this would work too. So after it was all obviously all paired, I launched Xbox Game Pass and great news, it worked in the menu navigating through, selected the game I wanted to play, Forza Horizon 5. And that's when things go a little bit disappointing. Once I got through the title sequence and then launched out of the plane and had to take control, I realized that Forza Horizon needs both trigger buttons. And because this gamepad only has one on each side and not two, I was stuck. Literally stuck. Forza Horizon 5 needs the R2 or right trigger, as it's called, on the Xbox controller. It needs that button to accelerate. And I didn't have that. I was mashing the R1 on there, and it just kept changing my view. All the other buttons worked. I was able to control the steering wheel. I was able to do other things that Forza Horizon can do with the other buttons. Everything but accelerate, which in a racing game is pretty much the only thing that's important. I put to bed the fact that this can be used with Game Pass. Whilst it was compatible, it doesn't have the required buttons and you can't map. So I can't put that S console button to use. But then I was sitting there and I was thinking, there's got to be another use case for this. I know there is. I remember before mobile gaming, we used to play mobile handheld games all the time. And what games were they? And then it hit me. Emulators. I remembered I had emulators on my phone and already had some games loaded. So I loaded up Pokemon Silver, one of my favorite games from back in the day from Game Boy Color. And immediately went about testing how the controller would integrate. To my absolute pleasure and delight, it worked perfectly. All of the same button mashing that I used to be able to do back in Pokemon Silver to get through the, the crazy dialogue or selecting my Pokemon. We all know Cyndaquil's the right one. Was there. Plus, in battle, worked great. So from emulation, this thing is a dream. Obviously, it's got all of the right buttons because controllers and gamepads from consoles in past generations worked beautifully and though they match that configuration really nicely plus it's mappable 
So you might be able to do something with that S console button that makes no sense. Now I've tested quite a few games and if you haven't seen a game that you thought might be tested, drop a line in the comments below and I'll happily go and test it and I'll reply to you. So if you're wondering whether or not you should get one of these, it all comes down to one, whether you can find it. I've had a look on eBay and they're not easily accessible. You will have to go and do a lot of trawling through different sellers, find the right price, make sure shipping isn't too expensive. I found some that are around 45 Australian dollars, so that could be accessible, but it just depends on shipping and where you live, whether you find it'll be worth it. I am very much looking forward to continuing to use this, especially when I travel. Because of its compact size, and because I'll be able to use it with emulation in particular, offline sort of gaming, very much looking forward to taking this on the road with me. But that is it for this week. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you've made it all the way this far, drop a line in the comments. But of course, if you're loving what I'm doing, please consider subscribing. It very much helps the channel out. And if you hit the bell icon, you'll also be notified. You'll also be notified when I launch you'll also be notified when i bring out another video and i actually have some other older retro samsung devices lying around here so make sure you are subscribed to make to see those when they come out come hang out with me on twitter and instagram because i love a bit of chat on twitter especially i'll see you in the next video you